In this video, we're going to set up Apollo Twin USB to work with Avid Pro Tools on a Windows computer. If you haven't done so, please install the software before watching so you can follow along. The Apollo workflow gives you a near-zero latency environment by providing input monitoring for all live audio through the Apollo interface, essentially replacing your DAW's software monitor function. This eliminates the round trip from the interface to computer and back again. The direct connection to your audio lets you hear and more importantly feel your live performance, complete with incredible real-time UAD processing. You can record and monitor through vintage compressors, reverbs, preamp models, or guitar amp emulations with no latency, just like a classic analog studio. Playback from Pro Tools or other DAWs is merged with the live sound in Apollo Twin, so audio is always in sync and host computer latency is completely avoided. Apollo's console application is the key to unlocking Apollo's unique real-time UAD processing capabilities. It emulates the workflow of a hardware console and allows you to monitor your audio, patch effects, and create headphone mixes, all within Apollo Twin's DSP. All inputs are shown as channel strips that are routed directly to the monitor output, so you always hear sound, unless the channel's fader is pulled down or the channel is muted. The console's faders, mute, solo, and pan only affect what you hear in the speakers and don't affect the audio recorded in Pro Tools. Audio sent to Pro Tools originates either pre-insert or post-insert, depending on the position of the insert effect switch on the channel. When set to record, channel insert effects are committed and recorded in Pro Tools. When set to monitor, channel insert effects are heard in the monitors but not printed. Channels can be set individually or console-wide using the global record and monitor buttons. Unison preamp emulations are always printed as they are attached to Apollo Twin's physical preamps. Now let's take a look at console settings. Open the console application from the start menu on your PC. Start by clicking the settings button to open the settings window. In the hardware tab, you can set the sample rate, clock source, hardware buffer size, input delay compensation, alt speaker count, and monitor operating level. You also have access to the digital input source and reference level for line outputs 3 and 4. The display tab lets you set console metering, clip hold, peak hold, plugins always on top, device names, and timeouts for modifiers. The plugins tab lets you manage which plugins appear in your console lists as well as their authorization status. You can also access the online store directly from here. Lastly, the MIDI tab lets you set an input device, channel, and note for tap tempo and plugin MIDI. The input device should be set to none when using MIDI outside the console application. To get started, let's go back to the hardware tab. The default settings are a good starting point and can be changed at any time. However, you may want to turn off input delay compensation. Input delay compensation is used to time align multi mic applications like drums with different plugins on the channels. Most of the time, it can be turned off to reduce latency and DSP consumption. Now launch Pro Tools. Before creating or opening a session, we need to select Apollo Twin USB as the playback engine. From the setup menu, open the playback engine dialog. You can dismiss the buffer configuration warning if it appears. Select the Apollo Twin USB from the pop-up menu, accept the dialog, and click OK. Now you can create a blank session to work with. Pro Tools automatically sends the session sample rate to Apollo Twin's internal clock, so you can switch between sessions with different sample rates without needing to restart or change any settings on Apollo Twin. Note that when you first launch Pro Tools and open a session with a different sample rate from the most recent session, you'll see a dialog indicating that I.O. channels have changed. You'll need to click Relaunch Pro Tools and open the session again. To use an external clock, set the source and hardware settings. Keep in mind that you need to manually set the external clock to match your session sample rate. Apollo Twin's driver publishes the names of all of its inputs and outputs to ASIO. Pro Tools uses this list for the default names in the I.O. setup window. When you install Apollo Twin, you'll want to set inputs, outputs, and buses to default so they appear correctly in the pop-up lists throughout the app. Note that the ADAT and SPDIF inputs are both present regardless of which digital mode you're using. You may want to set them to inactive as a reminder. I.O. labels are customizable and can be renamed and saved. As with all interfaces, 
The hardware buffer size used by Pro Tools is managed externally in the interface's software. Apollo Twin software is the console application. To set the buffer size, click on the Settings button and go to the Hardware tab. With Apollo Twin, DAW buffer size doesn't really matter because Apollo handles audio routing and processing with dedicated DSPs in the interface, so your latency is always 1.1 milliseconds at 96K. That means you can get your sound dialed in with EQ, compression, or any UAD plugins. You're free to set up reverbs and effects all in real time without compromising your computer's processing power or suffering the annoying delay common with other interfaces. If you run native effects or play virtual instruments inside Pro Tools, set the hardware buffer size to a low setting, like 64 or 128 samples. Low buffers use more of the computer's power for playback, so fewer tracks and native processes are possible, but latency is minimized and instruments are much easier to play. For mixing, you can set the hardware buffer size high so the computer has more horsepower to dedicate to the mixing engine. You'll have to experiment to find the best settings for your computer. For now, let's set the buffer size to 128. You'll want to enable Pro Tools low latency monitor mode so you don't hear an unintentional doubling effect while recording. Low latency monitoring mutes record enabled tracks as soon as you punch in so you'll only hear input through Apollo, which makes it perfect for overdubbing. Pro Tools delay compensation corrects for plug-in and I.O. latency, so be sure this feature is enabled within Pro Tools as well. Virtual channels let you send the audio output from DAW applications to channel strips in the console. It can be really useful to route Pro Tools' main output to a pair of virtual channels in the console instead of the main monitor. This lets you use a single fader to control the DAW's output level and makes it easier to blend live sources with DAW playback right in the console. In I.O. setups, simply assign your master output to Virtual 1-2, and then link Virtual 1-2 in the console to create a stereo fader and name it for easy identification. Virtual channels can also be used to add real-time UAD processing to virtual instruments. You can then record the processed sound as an audio track with less latency than using DAW inserts. To do so, route the output of the instrument track to virtual channels in the console. Apply real-time UAD processing in the console and dial in the sound. Then create a new audio track in Pro Tools, set the input to the same pair, and record it, complete with processing. There are several ways to set up your headphone mix in Apollo Twin. The simplest is to set the Q output source to monitor. Everything you hear in the speakers is routed to the headphone output. Input levels are mixed on console channel faders, and DAW playback levels are set in Pro Tools. And you control the overall volume with the big knob on Apollo Twin by setting the output selector to headphone. Another simple method comes for free when you route Pro Tools output to virtual channels. In addition to controlling Pro Tools volume level with a fader for your main mix, it also gives you a send you can use to create a separate blend of live inputs and DAW for the headphones. You can set the Q outputs to monitor to use the main mix, or set it to headphones and use sends. You can also create completely discrete headphone mixes using a combination of console and Pro Tools sends. The console recall plugin is used to keep the Apollo console's routing and processing synced up to your DAW session. Console Recall takes a snapshot of the entire console and stores all settings every time you hit Save in Pro Tools. Simply insert the Console Recall plugin in an insert slot on the master fader, and click the Sync button to enable automatic saving. In addition to providing direct access to Apollo's monitor control from within Pro Tools, it ensures that when you open a session months or even years from now, the tracking front end will be exactly the same as it was the last time you opened the session. Of course, Apollo Twin's DSP resources can be applied where they're needed. You can track with real-time UAD processing in the console, and you can also use UAD processing in Pro Tools for mixing. When mixing, be sure to disable plugins in the console to free up your DSP. So whether you're tracking, mixing, or mastering, Apollo Twin provides the sound quality, low latency performance, and power for all phases of your audio production. You'll find more information and current software at uaudio.com.